It's been several weeks since the city of Chicago ended the shot spotter gun detection technology, and there's still a lot of concerns that removing that's making the streets less safe. Welcome in the Illinois in Focus Daily. I'm Greg Bishop. Be sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and wake up with us each and every weekday morning for the live show. But also, you can get the podcast anywhere you get podcasts. Just search Illinois in Focus. And uh, what do we got? Well, uh, of course, in Chicago, the shot spotter technology implemented years ago, yes, cost taxpayers dollars, but what it did was provide police uh, somewhat real time data of detected firing of guns in the city and whether or not that would be something prompting police to show up. Well, Mayor Brandon Johnson, before he was elected in Chicago, uh, campaigned on getting rid of the technology, saying it doesn't work, uh, alluding to it uh, being targeted towards uh, certain neighborhoods and uh, in a way almost characterizing it as uh, racist. Uh, But he ended that contract uh, several weeks ago. Uh, But now there's a, a move afoot from Chicago City Alderman to essentially bring it back and to have a dedicated funding stream of sorts. Uh, listen, there's been a lot of different types of movements that uh, Chicago City Council members have attempted. Uh, they they thought that they could possibly pass something to remove the mayor uh, from making a decision on this that didn't advance. There was uh, some conversation that uh, this could come up during yesterday's uh, Chicago City Council meeting, which uh, was close to five hours long. Uh, but uh, obviously, uh, nothing transpired. Uh, the mayor was asked about it at a uh, post-council meeting news conference. We'll touch on some of what he had to say there. Uh, but some of the other things that were brought up during uh, the Chicago City Council meeting yesterday uh, included uh, the uh, issue of, well, migrant funding, uh, education, uh, the city's budget deficit, uh, and all of those things wrapped in with public comments during uh, that, uh, that, that that city council meeting yesterday. Uh, so if you get a chance, uh, it's right at the beginning. You can watch all those public comments, and they range from people talking about environmental concerns to those still frustrated with uh, the large number of tax dollars going to non-citizens in the city uh, and uh, everything in between, uh, including uh, the issue of shot spotter. Uh, But with ShotSpotter no longer in effect in Chicago, again, some Chicago aldermen looking to try to get uh, some some funding for that. But uh, here's the mayor yesterday uh, responding to questions about ShotSpotter. And go. After the last council meeting, you said you would veto the ShotSpotter ordinance. And I'd be interested to know um, why your approach changed and what your thought process yeah, was. Yeah, it's, it's a good question. And thank you for that question, by the way. Look, I, I've said all along, and I think uh, uh, one of your colleagues mentioned this earlier, about, you know, being collaborative. And <laughs> that's actually not hard for me. Like, I, I want to work with people. I mean, I'm a, I'm a middle child, so naturally my, my proclivity is to find consensus. Um, but the, the, the reality of this is this, this particular resolution did not reinstate ShotSpotter. That's, that's the, the misinformation that's out there. What it attempted to do is to give procurement authority to a separate body, which is illegal. So for, for us, in good faith, to continue to show that we're collaborative, we'll continue to do that with RFIs. So, uh, you know, requests for information, something that uh, Johnson put out after ending the shot spotter contract. So they're going to try to get more information on other technologies. But again, uh, Chicago aldermen are looking to possibly raise funds to focus on this. <laughs> do you know what the part do we know what's so disappointing about, you know, this effort to raise money uh, for technology that has proven all over the country that it doesn't work is that they're going to raise 2.5 million dollars for a single item that has proven its ineffectiveness but work against 100 million dollars that could have addressed housing and homelessness in this city so uh, it's about priorities, I guess, uh, and as much as what you want to spend your money on. Uh, he points to homelessness in the city and the cost of that, and people want to use this technology. He says it doesn't work, uh, but, I mean, we've seen several stories uh, since ShotSpotters ended of police arriving somewhere, finding somebody who was shot, 
and they didn't get any indication of shots being fired in that area. And therefore, you know, people's likelihood of surviving such a uh, such a shooting uh, could be diminished quite a bit if there's not a uh, strong uh, response and a quick response. And that's something that uh, supporters of ShotSpotter uh, believe happens when you put it in areas where there's gunfire. Uh, but uh, Johnson saying that they're looking for a wholesome approach, a, a uh, you know, a whole uh, forward and, and, and broad approach to, to fighting crime and public safety. And here's uh, the mayor with those thoughts. Here's what I've heard repeatedly is that it's not just the technology, it's the full force of government that, you know, people are, you know, very much committed to. Um, policing alone, technology alone is not going to build a better, stronger, safer Chicago. Everyone agrees on that. Again, on the specific item on ShotSpotter, look, the state's attorney said that it was ineffective. The OIG inspector general said it was ineffective. Houston, San Antonio, Seattle. New Orleans, cities all over America have called into question the effectiveness of this particular form of technology. What I've said is that we have to have technology that works and that we have opened up a process to give people an opportunity to weigh in on that. We have seen, though, in other places where supporters of ShotSpotter um, lay out, it helped in, for instance, Mexico City, where you used ShotSpotter as a, uh, a, a different um, tool that could be uh, implemented. Uh, so some of the other things that uh, were talked about, at least during the public uh, portion of the Chicago City Council, uh, you had people discussing the uh, shot spotter technology, you had people discussing uh, the uh, demonstrations uh, over uh, the Israel uh, Hamas war. Uh, you had questions about uh, lakefront developments. You had uh, uh, you know, a variety of different activists uh, talking about uh, political unity. Uh, you had uh, a whole host of others that were uh, discussing financing for projects in their communities uh, and in local construction uh, and uh, even some recognition of International Girls Day. Uh, but uh, clearly there's a it's not a dull moment in the city of Chicago as they uh, deal with a lot of these issues uh, up front and center. Uh, all right. It is Illinois in Focus Daily. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell with America's Talking Network and join us each and every weekday morning. Get the podcast where you get your podcasts at uh, really anywhere. Just search Illinois in Focus and uh, you can make it happen. Uh, it's right here with America's Talking Network. I'm Greg Bishop. Be sure to get headlines at thecentersquare.com.